Speed Paint 2.0 is now finally available, and I picked up the Big Mega set, which includes 50 of the latest Speed Paints. So in this video, I'll be just giving you my first impressions, like hands-on stuff, trying out the reactivation bits, and just seeing whether or not out of the box, they seem worth it at this first glance. So if you have followed the channel for some time, you'll know I'm a very big fan of contrast paint and also army paint or speed paint. They're a great way of just getting that first layer down, having some fun and getting your minis tabletop ready in pretty record time. However, the original speed paint set wasn't without its flaws. And a lot of people complained about the fact that they would reactivate if you put a layer over the top of them. They're very runny as well. And the pigmentation wasn't always fantastic. So Army Painter claims that they have now fixed it with their latest sets. So in this video, we're gonna test a few things just to see whether or not that seems true with the first usage. They've also introduced with this set, so obviously a whole range of new colors as well. There's a lot of bright stuff, and this, so this feels like it's in response to Games Workshop rolling out their new range of contrast paints that had a whole load of really bright, very pigmented colors that came out with them. So it's a nice and welcome thing to see. Perhaps my most exciting thing about this is it also includes three metallics as well. And I hate working with metallics, they're always such a pain. So to have a speed paint version of a metallic, that's like music to my ears. So to test this, I grabbed a few of my unpainted minis. Now these first two that I'm trying out were done with a Xenophil Prime as well. So that is black undercoat with a white from above. I decided to grab a whole random selection of different bright colors to test them out. I was already quite familiar with their previous stuff, although they have been redone with this set. And it was just interesting to see how those bright colors would come out. Compared to the Games Workshop stuff, they didn't seem quite as thick going down. So what I mean by that is on this lady's dress, for example, they almost felt kind of muted. Although they were bright, they were also relatively, I don't know, almost like a watercolor putting them on there. It's not true for all of the colors I tried, but for a few of them as I put them down, they didn't strike me as really popping right out of the tub. That's not to say they're bad, they look pretty nice as I put them down, and they are very bright as well, which is also good. I then started to move across and try some different things as well. So on this larger model, for example, I used this blue skin. I've got to say, I really like the way this turned out. And then I gave it this purple hair as well. And this really did pop. So some of those colors really do pop as you start to apply them, but others definitely feel a lot more washy. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. When I get onto the full review of this and I try out every single one of them, like I did with my contrast paints video, I'll be sure to kind of give you that full coverage so that way you can see which ones are more wash like and which ones go down more like those previous speed paints we've seen in the past. I had a lot of fun just pushing around the colors, playing with them. And one thing that I found with these first two that I was trying out was that I didn't really have too much runniness. So speed paints of the past have been known to run quite a lot and I've experienced that a lot. Like if I put a lot of, I don't know, orange in the hair, for example, and I slosh it on, then it will spill over and start to run into other layers that are already down. I didn't find that as much with this, although I did find it on the next miniature we'll come on to, but it certainly seemed to be much better. Of course, I had to try out the metallics as well. So I tried out the silver on this lady's knives and I've got to say it worked as I expected. I don't know really what I was expecting because you're not really going to get too much contrast. It's not going to give you this like non-metallic metal look. It is metal pigments in there. So it is sparkly, it does shine, it gives you that metallic sheen. It's not quite as lustrous as some people might be looking for, but it gives a nice base metallic coat. So on these daggers, for example, it looks nice enough. And then all these like beads and everything on this other lady, it looks nice. Mm. And then I grab like the bronze and the gold and I started putting it onto this larger miniature and I want to like all the beads and everything. It looks nice. It stands out. It looks metallic at first glance. I definitely probably want to go back in there and lighten some of those areas. But as a base level for metallics, it's nice to work with. Basically, these feel like a standard metallic paint that's been mixed in with speed paint medium, which is how I've always done metallics in the past. So it works pretty much identically to that. But it's nice to have that ready mixed and in a bottle and ready to go. Moving across onto these next two miniatures, there's some old ones that I've got laying around from a D&D board game. They were primed at just pure white, so I figured it would give me an opportunity to see what these colors look like without the darkness underneath it as well. I grabbed a few more of my bright ones. So for this tentacle creature, I sloshed on some blue, some pinks for the brain, and then this yellow for the beak. And with this one as well, I did it in about two minutes, just to give you an example of how moving between one wet layer to the next section of it it didn't blend too much, which is quite nice. The only issue that I did have is obviously when I got onto the beak, I was using a light yellow, and then you had all the pink towards the top. So it did start to blend ever so slightly, but considering how runny they've been in the past, it was quite nice to see how well it stayed within its boundaries. Also using a white undercoat, unsurprisingly, makes these colors pop a hell of a lot more. So depending on the overall result you want to achieve from these, it's certainly worthwhile making sure that you do consider that initial undercoat that you're gonna be putting down. 
Moving across onto the snake from the board game, I wanted to try out these two greens just to see how different they were. Actually, I quite like the effect that we've got. It's a more muted green underneath and then this more bright orc skin on top. I've always found that Games Workshop and Army Painter, their orc skin is just far too bright and I guess radioactive for my liking, but I've got to say it really stands out and looks quite nice on here. This, however, is one of the models where I found more pooling. So around the bottom of the snake, there was more pooling that started to build up as it did get a little bit more sloshy. I was going more heavy handed with it to get some more color down on there, but it is certainly one thing to bear in mind. They haven't fixed the issue and that makes sense. Gravity and everything else that goes into it, of course, it's going to make it runny and it's going to pull all of that down. However, it's certainly not anywhere near as bad as I've experienced on the previous set of speed paints. So that was just to give me an idea of what those colors were starting to look like, how it worked, and it feels very similar to previous Army Painter speed paint. However, it's certainly nice to have a much larger range of colors and also those metallics to come along with it. But now I knew I needed to find out whether or not they reactivated. So the big problem in the past has been that if you go to put down any layer over the top of the previous layer, where it's been an Army Painter speed paint, it normally reactivates and starts to blend in with the color you're putting down. For me, I've really enjoyed that. I've always seen it as a bit of a feature because I'll tend to use just pure white and then blend it in with that layer below just to get some highlights. But apparently that won't happen. So the first thing I did is I just grabbed some white, sloshed it onto my wet palette and started putting it down on the blade of this weapon. Now, normally what would happen at this point is that white would start to gradually become pink as I put more and more down and I'd need to wait for it to dry. And then I need to go back in there with some more pure white once it had dried and then just touch up the edges. It didn't happen with this, so it definitely seems to be fixed, at least with this color. The next thing I wanted to try was just using some pure water on there and whether or not that would cause the, the layer that I was attacking with this paintbrush to start reactivating. So in this part of the video, you'll see me just jabbing the model over and over again with a paintbrush full of water. Thankfully, it didn't reactivate. I kept testing it on my skin as well just to see if any of that pigment was coming off and I kept wiping it away with my thumb just to see whether or not it would kind of peel away that previous layer. And thankfully, it didn't. So then I moved on to speed paint medium. So I popped some of that onto my palette and started doing the same thing as I did with my water. So I attacked the model with my brush full of speed paint medium. At this point, I really expected it to come away, but it didn't. Again, it stayed dry. It didn't reactivate. So that is a pretty big bonus. Now, the big area that always drove me mad when it came to reactivation was using metallics over the top of my Army Painter speed paint. Normally what I'd find, if I used for a silver, for example, over anything that was brown, it would then blend in with the silver and it would become bronze or just it would take up the color that was underneath it and mix. So I decided I would give that a shot. So I grabbed some silver, sloshed it onto the blade as well, just to see whether or not that would cause the blade underneath it to reactivate and become this like pinky silver mess. Thankfully, it didn't. So all the different things that I tried, and bear in mind, this is a relatively limited test at this stage, but all those little things that I did try didn't reactivate the previous layer. So it looks like maybe they have fixed the issue, but I'm sure we'll find something that causes it to go wrong. So that's my very first impressions. I just wanted to make this video after using them for about a week, just to let you know my thoughts on it. I'll have a full review video coming up in the near future. But for that, I wanted to print off a whole load of minis so that way I can test out every single color for you, show you what they all look like. I'll do some airbrush tests with it as well, some more reactivation tests. I'll try out a few different undercoats as well to give you an idea what it looks like on a gray, on a pure white, on a xenophil. I'll also try different types of washes as well to see whether or not like an oil wash, for example, will cause it to reactivate. So let me know in the comments, is there anything you want me to test out with these? Is there anything you'd like to see from them as well in that full review and anything you'd like me to find out and I'll do my best to make that happen. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button. Come along for the next video and I'll see you soon. Bye.